Okay, so firstly, welcome to today's course and thank you for logging in and signing up. Uh, my name is Annette Matthews. I am originally a dental hygienist and therapist, uh, which I still am, uh, but ultimately I have a very keen interest in skin and I was really wanting to share with you guys just an insight. You may be considering getting into skincare or aesthetics, you may already be in it and thinking about doing alternative treatments and what to do next. So what hopefully this course will do is just enable you to think a little bit more about your career, your development, um, and what it is that you want to be doing when you are um, in, in work and, and the sort of treatments that you want to be offering to clients and patients with obviously their best interest at heart, um, which is a natural thing in, in most professions really, but I like to, to pride myself in the fact that hygienists and therapists really, really do think outside uh, the box with, with things like this. I'll try not to waffle on too much because I know obviously you're probably keen to get really on with the content here. So welcome, enjoy. You can stop and uh, pause this as often as you like. And obviously there is the ebook to complement this as well, which will hopefully uh, enable you to, to uh, you know, gain, gain a bit of a better insight into where you want to go next. So grab a cup of coffee and uh, enjoy yourself over the next few uh, 45 minutes to hour. So an introduction to skincare and facial aesthetics. So where it is that you want to go next, as I've mentioned already, you may already be in aesthetics. You may be looking to get into aesthetics. You may be thinking, I don't know enough about anything and I've got no idea where I want to go with this at all. So obviously, hopefully what this will do is give you a guide on where you can do, what prerequisites I would recommend, what sort of things you need to be thinking about looking at studying, and obviously where I can help you with the courses that I've put together um, and had accredited already, uh, and then you can make, make your own mind up on whom or how it is that you decide to train moving forward. So the aims of this is to gain an insight into an exciting and a rewarding career. And there is an option, obviously, to complement current qualifications or add new qualifications to, to offer new treatments and things that you can do within your, within your daily do. The objectives of uh, the course is to build an, acknowledge, an acknowledgement of skin's anatomy and the importance of it, to extend knowledge in this before anything else. We're going to take a current look at facial aesthetics in practice. We're going to have a brief look at biogenesis, renewal, and the regeneration of the ECM in English, the extracellular matrix, so biostimulation and getting the body to ultimately fix itself. We're going to take a look at prescription and non-prescription treatment options and explain them a little bit more for you guys. We're also going to have a look at non-invasive facial aesthetic products um, featuring non-cross-linked injectables. So again, these are non-prescription. This will all make sense as we go along. And we're also going to take a look at uh, microneedling, collagen therapy, introducing chemical peels, professional exfoliation, explain how that works, see if it's something you want to trade in as well, skincare, nutritional considerations, uh, and obviously putting these into practice. Like, you know, it's great, you might want to put them all in your basket and learn every single one of them, but how on earth is it going to be practical and how can I put this into practice? Uh, we're going to have a chat about indemnity and making sure that you are qualified, competent and indemnified to be doing these things, because I understand there'll be lots of questions around that. Business model ability as well. There's a few things I want to help you out with that, one of which is a SWOT analysis on personal development and getting into aesthetics and skincare, which I know you're going to roll your eyes at, but you need to do it as part of this course. If you haven't done it already, there's a separate course where you can go on and do that. And you definitely need to record definitely need to be doing that for yourself and recommend it to others because it will give you an insight on where it is that you want to go um, and where it is that you want to be. So here is my training premise. So I have uh, literally, because of everything that's going on, we are in 2020. So if anyone's listening to this later on, uh, we're going through a bit of an unprecedented time. So my physical classroom is now a digital classroom for now. So I'm still wanting to share the, uh, the insights and knowledge that I have. And that's why I'm doing it in this format. And then obviously, once we are back into the swing of things and things are very different, we can still do some stuff online 
online, but I do prefer face to face um, and one to one sessions. Um, and obviously group group learning is fantastic as well. But I'm very, very proud that in 2019, I managed to open my own skin clinic and my own aesthetics training academy uh, from the experience and the, uh, the knowledge that I had. And I'm still increasing that and growing that every single day. So I'm not here because I know everything. I'm here to share with you guys my own journey and what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. So hopefully to prevent you guys from wasting any money like I have in the past and, uh, you know, investing in yourself in, in, a, in, a, in a proper way, really, in, in the best way possible. So when we start to think about skin, there's a whole lot more to it. And my very first aesthetic course, I was straight out of university and I popped along to a uh, weekend Botox and filler course. And I know they still exist. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but there are good and there are bad ones out there. What I knew about skin was shameful in the fact that I was still injecting and doing these dermal filler treatments and toxin treatments and everything else that you're going to learn a little bit more about as well before I didn't know anything about skin and skin science. So that is ultimately why I'm creating this journey for you guys. So you can actually see and resonate with the sort of things that will really, really help you to know and understand before you move on to anything else. So you're learning to walk before you can run. We do it in our other roles. We've always done that. We've, you know, we have primary school, secondary school, college and university, but with, with obviously courses, that you learn whilst you're doing them so these hands-on courses is difficult to to you know to pin these down and I know it is an it is a um, profession and it is a um, sector at the moment where there isn't much re much regulation and guidance and I do think that will change I think it should have to change uh, but in the interim what I want to be doing is making sure that anybody that is coming through my doors is gaining that very first insight into the importance of all the other surrounding structures before we start moving on to anything else like toxin and filler so hopefully you'll get that by the end of this course and think okay maybe Annette's right and I need to just have a little look into some other things first build my knowledge build my confidence build my skill set and then look into those sort of things if you do then I've definitely done the right thing so the anatomy of skin start here the sign is simple the skin is the largest organ of the human body um, while your skin looks relatively simple to the naked eye it's much more complicated than what you can actually see your skin has different layers um, three main ones being the epidermis the dermis and the subcutaneous now there's lots more to know about the skin that is just a little bit of a guide um, and you definitely need to be that this needs to be your first port of call if, if i had done it this way around i would feel a lot better in the first instance as i've mentioned this weekend course that i did came out on a monday morning like dr death with my botox and filler in a bag and ultimately i was absolutely petrified to do anything with it because i i didn't know enough about anatomy and about skincare um, and it set me back so much uh, so obviously learning about skin and learning about the insights of everything before that will really stand you in good stead so just a little bit to just to uh, whet your appetite towards hopefully moving on to the skin science course that I have available. We have multiple layers of the skin, which we've already learned about. We've got a live part of the skin as well. So obviously when we are injecting or doing anything to these uh, areas, then it is going to have a potential systemic effect. So understanding, understanding anatomy, which we are good at, and obviously having a refresher of that is so, so important too. But understanding implications, contraindications, um, complications, all these things need to be considered. And any good course should have all of this included from the offset and be available afterwards, you know, continuously. So it's not a limited time either. So support is really important when you get into this industry. Um, and I do pride myself in that. It is only me, but I do try and answer the phone or a text within 24, 48 hours of anybody that's trained with me before, um, you know, if, if they're having any issues or problems. But ultimately, let's take a look at skin. So we've got the epidermis, the dermis and the hypodermis there. The dermis is the live part. 
anything that is reaching that part is where we need to be a little bit more mindful of what it is that we're doing. So obviously your dermal fillers, um, you, you know, your toxin, which is reaching your hypodermis aspect, uh, but anything that's getting to that live part can have a systemic effect on the skin, on the human being, on the person that we are treating. We need to know more about hair. We need to know more about um, sebaceous glands. We need to know more about sweat glands and nerve endings and why and, and, and what and where things happen and why that they do. Um, and ultimately, hopefully, that's what the uh, skin science course that I have created uh, will, will give you an insight into and um, build that in the right context for you to, you know, as a building block for the next level of training that you want to move on to. It's your career and it's your journey at the end of the day and you can start and stop as many things as you want to do. But I want to try and formulate some sort of order for you to help you learn them in the right way so that you're not going forward and then 15 steps back because that's exactly what I did. So learning from my mistakes. Yes, we're all still going to continue to make mistakes. We always do. That's how we learn. It's, it's We are humans at the end of the day. Uh, but if I could just help that little bit, then then my work here is done as well. So we want to think about skin analysis. This is the first place that we need to stop and look at. We need to know more about skin, skin science, skin conditions, um, you know, skin treatments in particular, uh, nutrition, systemic effects. We're pretty good at that if you're coming from a dental background anyway. Um, you know, thinking about medication, thinking about uh, histamine reactions, thinking about anything that you'd be having an impact on that patient that is affecting the skin and or any treatments that you move on to do. And the list is endless and we can't remember them all, but having that background knowledge is really, really good. And obviously continually developing that as you move into your career as well is important. Skin care and home care, okay? And I've tagged facials on the end there, but this is so, so relevant. Why is it that people come to us and think we can wave this magic wand and give them everything that they need um, and in, improve everything just with that fact alone? That isn't the case. There's an awful lot of it which is down to them as well and getting them to understand that and build compliance into any treatment plan or routine is key. So you need to know more about skincare products. And again, uh, the, you know, I do webinars and there's, there's ebooks available for different things and ingredients and things like that. So that's something that you can download from me as well. Um, facial, starting off with the basics. So these people are coming in, they've probably never had any sort of treatment before. They may be petrified of having needles or treatments to their skin. Um, why go in with something? you know long ball like the toxin and fillers when we can actually just get them thinking about home care skin care just basic facials and basic common sense of cleansing the skin this is where we need to start with everybody okay uh, bio revitalization this is biostimulation so this is a biggie this is an innovation and it's getting the body to fix itself it's ultimate, there are new innovative skincare um, products and treatments out there that now get the body to fix itself, get the skin to fix itself. So if we're gonna be doing that, then you are at a, a lesser risk of a complication. I would never say never at a risk of a complication, but it makes your life a lot, lot easier and you sleep better at night. If we are utilizing products and procedures to get the body to fix itself, common sense, right? Um, chemical peels. So this is a form of exfoliation, which we're going to look at shortly. It scares an awful lot of people off, but it needn't because it really, really is a great procedure to have um, and a routine procedure to have and something again to wean people into having other treatments as well. Dermal filler, we're going to take a look at in a moment in some of the slides. Botulinum toxin, exactly the same. Um, these need to be a little bit later down that learning journey for you guys because there's, there's two reasons and you'll see that as I come on to speak to, speak to you about them shortly. Um, I'm trying not to waffle too much on one slide and bore you to death. Microneedling. This is a form of collagen therapy, which we are going to chat about. Dermal planing. That's another way of professionally exfoliating the skin. Permanent makeup, I've got lots of colleagues and peers that have gone into this and doing a really, really smashing job because we tend to be quite creative from a hygiene and therapy background. 
plasma treatments such as fibroblast therapy we're going to chat about there's even things like laser hair removal laser skincare treatments um and then you know we can we can train in phlebotomy which is where we take blood and we can look at plasma facials prp uh, plasma replacement fibroblast plasma replacement therapies um and then last but not least is kind of vitamin injections but for me, this is more about nutrition. This is more about that very first stage skin analysis, nutrition and home care. But it's still an option that you can move on to and, and an offering that you can have for clients in an aesthetic uh, business and industry. The list is exhaustive and it's still growing. There's new treatments all the time. So with that in mind, you need a plan. It's OK to look at all these courses and think I want to do everything. I want to be an expert at all of it. And I personally you know i i felt like that in the felt like that in the first instance but it's it's not you know it shouldn't be like that we can be jack of all trades and rubbish at pretty much all of them so you need to pick out your niches and where it is that you want to be at and how you want to get there you need to have a plan you've got to build a brand around that plan as well you might already have a brand that you want to develop You've got to build a business plan or oh, where are you going to implement these treatments? Do you have a premise in mind? Have you got, a, you know, what, all these sort of things you need to think about before you even start about this training and where it is that you want to go. Then you start once you've got all that in, in mind and where you know where you want to go, you then start to invest in new skills. You grow the skills, you grow your business, you grow your brand and you grow the plan. So obviously, once you've implemented everything in that initial analysis, you do a new one and you start all over again. Welcome to my world. This is exactly what I'm doing right now. This is exactly what I did before I built my clinic. It's exactly what I did at the start of COVID-19. I was building and, and working out what it is that I wanted to do and where I wanted to be. And I do this on a weekly basis, if not daily, with the tasks that I have. So it really, really does help. You need to give it a go. So... Again, we're going to talk about layers. We're going to talk about skin. We're going to talk about it like Shrek and his onion here. So the hair, the hair, the skin has many layers and many functions. And recognizing all of these is really, really important. Some of you may have been lucky enough to get on my live webinars where we talk about this in more detail. But when we start to think about products that we're putting on, in or underneath the skin, we need to know an awful lot more. Um, and hopefully you will all agree with me now. I've talked for a little while just now um, about the importance of having some sort of skin science under your belt as well. Now, yes, we have facial anatomy, we have medical emergency training and all of the above, but we do definitely need to have that consideration of skin science behind it and background reading all around it as well. The next stop from that would be facial anatomy. And I completely get you know the 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 background that we're from in dentistry and hygiene therapy whoever it is that's listening to this you know if you've already got some anatomy training then that's great but it's not enough okay i couldn't stand here and reel off every single muscle of the face i do have mental blocks i can't remember them all i do need to refresh myself um on a monthly on a weekly on a daily basis sometimes we are human beings at the end of the day so don't think that what you've learned at university five six seven or ten years ago is going to be enough you need to push yourself out of that comfort zone again and get learning some more facial anatomy. That is essential. And again, there is courses on my online platform where you can go ahead and, and do this and enroll onto them. Very, very important to make you a good clinician, to make you a safe clinician. Uh, there is probably no such thing as a safe clinician because there is no such thing as completely safe procedures. If we're messing around with somebody's face, uh, then it, you know there are possible implications. So understanding facial anatomy will reduce these risks and it's really really important medical emergency training yes we do this routinely as part of a, our dental background but we need to look at it a little bit closer in relation to aesthetics and skin and step outside that comfort zone and once we know more about skin and we know more about reactions what other things may we come across what other complications and considerations do i need to make and put into place ready for uh, my aesthetics training ready for my where i want to be ready for my swot analysis so what what would be holding me back if i can do that treatment and something like this happens what else do i need to think about so it's okay having general medical emergency training but there are treatment specific things that you definitely want to consider 
Um, and, and obviously treatments explained now. So this is where I want to just move on to educating you guys or um, and helping you guys understand a little bit more about the treatments that are available that you can train in. There are some prerequisites required and there is a certain order I would always recommend to do them in, um, which is which is clear, hopefully, as we go through but knowledge empowers you and obviously understanding the sort of treatments that you can train in will help you invest your money invest your time invest your efforts into the right things in the first place because that is so so important this is a big big question i see on the forums all the time and that is is it a prescription do we need a prescription to do that and i tear my hair out with it and um I completely get that you know this is this is a big question that we all have and we want to make sure that we're doing things safely and right and that that is just so so as we're going through this training I'm going to be uh, highlighting to you guys the things that are prescription and the things that aren't now naturally the things that aren't are the things where you can literally take the lasso off and fly with them and that's exactly what I've done in my clinic I do do prescription treatments. Um, I do have prescribers that work alongside and even for me. But ultimately, where I found my freedom and my niche that I talked about in the beginning is with these non-prescription treatments. OK, so these are the treatments where you don't need to knock on anybody's door. Uh, we can still practice them safely. Um, and obviously with our with our full mindset of pre-training and prerequisites that we've done, we, we can offer treatments and um, do them safely and put the patient first with that. Now, this isn't in any way to put you off prescription treatments because we can all do them as well. Um, so long as we're doing them safely, which we'll come on to as, well as, I, as I go through each slide. Um, so don't see it as me putting you off. I'm just trying to get you to think outside the box of where it is that you trade next and what it is that you choose to do and how you choose to do it. So let's have a little look at dermal fillers versus botulinum toxin. So botulinum toxin or Botox is a trade name of a certain product. There are various um, brand names out there as well. You've got Bocature, you've got Azalor, um, to name a few ultimately. So what Botox will do, and some of you may know or you may not, that's not a bad thing. Um, it helps with frown lines. It helps with crow's feet. It can give you an eyebrow lift. It helps with the glabella lines, which are the 11s that some people call them, these liver lines right in the middle of your forehead there where you frown. Bunny lines, it can help uh, with top lip lines, pebbled chins, uh, any necklines, and it can also help from a medical aspect with excess sweating as well. Dermal fillers are there for brow shaping and lifting again. They can help disguise eye bags and fill tear trough areas. They can uh, work for cheek enhancement and non-surgical facelifts. We can reshape noses with them. We can do a lip enhancement, chin enhancement. Full facial rejuvenation is possible with dermal fillers. We can replace or create volume and features and reversal is possible but it must be done um, in some emergencies. So it's not something that we take lightly and it's something that we need to be sure that we are competent and trained in, in dealing with should we move on to dermal fillers as a treatment. Now, dermal fillers, they are a non-prescription item, so we don't need a prescription to do it. However, if you look at that bottom section there, a reversal may be needed in an emergency and this aspect will need a prescriber. So if you are doing toxin and or filler, you will always need a prescriber on hand um, for, for the safety and the importance of the patient as well. Botulinum toxin, that is a prescription only item and that is where you will need a prescriber face to face, um, much like the enzyme for the filler. So it's not the filler that you need the prescriber for, it's the reversal, which, you know, hopefully if we if we are, uh, it can happen to anybody when you need to reverse filler. Uh, but we can obviously be mindful and proactive and and take care when doing these treatments. But we must always have access to a prescriber. Um, otherwise, you know, in my personal opinion, that's quite negligent of the fact that you're doing these treatments knowing full well you could cause an issue and you've not got what you need to put that right. So that's really, really important. So botulinum toxin, as you can see at the top there, is a prescription item. 
Um, its indications for use in the aesthetic clinic are to eliminate or reduce dynamic facial wrinkles. So dynamic are the ones that are there um, when we move and static are lines that are there for consistent moving of, of an area. So if you've got a muscle that's relaxing and contracting continuously, the collagen, the elastin breaks down in that area and we form a line in a wrinkle. So it's there and it's going to stop that muscle from working and it's going to soften these static wrinkles. It can also create lifts, which we chatted about last on the last slide, um, you know, to, to, to lift the brow area up as well and help reduce hooded eyes or, um, you know, big, big um, hooded eye areas as well. So how a toxin works is um, we are basically placing a, a chemical or a toxin that um, in, in, into, the, into the muscle and the muscle is then um, destroyed and the SNAP25 protein is destroyed that binds the, uh, the nerve to the muscle. Now it's not a permanent process and what will happen over the next three, uh, maybe four or five months depending on the individual everybody's different is these little vesicles will then grow back and allow the muscle to move again so it is a um, semi-permanent solution but it's a very effective solution for the removal of lines and wrinkles again it stops that chemical message from recent reaching the muscle dermal fillers they are um, ordinarily the ones that we use nowadays are a hyaluronic acid and it's a cross-linked hyaluronic acid so what you may find is clients will come in and they, they are scared to death of the Leslie Ash uh, scenario. Now, uh, you know, I, know, I don't know exactly, but I do believe it to be that it was a silicon filler that she had and that's why she had that reaction. So now we use more um, biologically accepting products such as the hyaluronic acid, but it's still cross-linked. Uh, the way that it works, it's going to reduce wrinkles. So hyaluronic acid acts as a moisture retention. It takes on more moisture. It loves moisture. So it will take on, um, you know, that, that plumping activity. It's going to help correct deep nasolabial folds and marionette lines, correct age-related volume loss, cheeks and chin, amongst other areas. It firms the skin because it creates this plumping activity and it enhances facial contours as well. And obviously more routinely is your lip definitions and your lip enhancements that you can do. Now, as I've mentioned, the product itself is not a prescription item. We can um, get hold of it quite easily. In fact, anybody can scarily. Uh, what you do need a prescription for is an enzyme. The enzyme is hyalase and it's this enzyme that you use to reverse a filler should you need to. Why would you need to reverse a filler? If you inject it directly into or through a blood vessel, then that blood vessel will not be able to feed and provide nutrients to that part of the skin. And the skin will start to die off. So you will get something called tissue necrosis. Now, I know it sounds horrendous and scary. This is why when I walked out on a Monday morning after a weekend of a filler course with my doctor death bag, I was absolutely petrified because I didn't have um, at the time the support and, and you know the things around me that you guys can have access to now with some of these courses out there. So don't let it put you off, but understand the importance of um, you know, having the right things in place before you even start to do these treatments. And the first thing would have to be, like I keep going on about, is that background knowledge around skin, around anatomy, around um, facial aesthetics in general, around patient selection, all of the above. So, so important. But hopefully that's given you a bit more of an insight into dermal fillers. And here's a bit of an image as why we need to know that a little bit more. So what you can see here is the uh, blood vessel and capillary network. And you can see why things can quite easily go wrong if, we, if, if filler is in the wrong hands. If we know how to, a complication can happen to anybody. And if we know how to manage that efficiently and quickly and we have everything in place, then we are safe injectors and we are doing everything within our powers to put our patients first as well. And that's what's important. So just to kind of touch on the whole cross link and the science side of things here. So filler, um, dependent on the product, dermal filler, depend on where it's from, the brand, who makes it, how it's made. It can be cross linked in a variety of ways. So you've got loads and loads of different ways of cross linking the product and how it's cross linked resonates how that product works underneath the skin.
So there's loads of different products to choose from, which makes it even more stressful when you do your training. But trust me, we'll look after you. Uh, but ultimately, you will have the, the right product selection for the right area to get the patient's expectations and, um, and obviously put in the patient's safety first as well. So we want to make sure that it's, it's uh, cross-synced in, in the correct way. So cross-thinking is basically, if you imagine, it's, it's just held together. And the more places it's held together, the more rigid the product may be. And as you can see, um, hyaluronic acid filler is carefully injected down into the dermis, subcutaneously, dependent on which type, again, that you are using, which is important when you do your training to learn all of these sort of things and the products and how they work. And it then obviously plumps out, there's hyaluronic acid in that area that's crossing, which attracts more hydration to the area as well. And that is what plumps out that line and that wrinkle. Much like toxin, it is um, a semi-permanent result because what will happen is our body will fight um, to break down this cross-link unrecognized dermal filler. And in effect, you know, we, we may need to have further treatments to keep the results or we will need to have further treatments to keep the results and to keep the client happy as well. So again, hopefully you can now understand why we need to think about these very first aspects before we move on to this. And there's, there's, more, there's more to it than just dermal filler and botulinum toxin. And this is what I'm going to introduce to you guys now. There is a whole element of prescription free treatments, um, which we can perform with freedom and fantastic results as well. OK, um, now I'm not here to get into the logistics of um fighting around our prescription rights and you know saying that we are more than capable of prescribing toxin that's not what this course is about what i'm here for is to to educate you as to how and what the rules are now and what we can do with these products when we're trained and competent to do so but also what we can do ahead of that how we can maybe we've already got somebody within our business development plan or within our practice wherever it is that we're looking at doing this within our swap plan who already does all those treatments so what can you do to complement them or work alongside them? So this is what we're going to answer you with now. So chemical peels. I remember the first dentist that I worked with um, who was into aesthetics when I first got into it myself. And he said, oh, you know, these are his words, actually. Um, if he's listening, he will know who I'm talking about. But he was like, oh, chemical peels are so easy. And we literally just slap them on somebody's face. It's so, so easy. And at the time I thought, OK, that looks fair enough. There's a little bit more to it than that, but ultimately um, it, it is such a great procedure to have in the bag and offer to your clients because it is for pretty much anybody. But understanding skin, which I've already talked about from the beginning, skin conditions, skin type, skin concerns will give you a lot more out of the chemical peels and the ones that you opt to train in and choose to use as well. A peel is going to help lighten unwanted pigmentation, so the, the dark colours on the skin. It's going to even out skin tone and give a brighter complexion. It's going to help diminish fine lines and wrinkles, brighten and smooth out rough skin. It helps increase collagen and elastin. It's going to lighten acne blemishes and prevent future breakouts as well. So there's many, many uh, reasons why somebody would want to have a peel, but they don't know that it's a peel that they want. So they may assume they want toxin or filler because that is more well known. But then it's down to us as a clinician and our skin analysis and all our experience that you've got to date, hopefully before you moved on to any other sort of aesthetics that you can think, let's start with this. Let's get you into a great home care routine. Let's get you having a professional treatment once a month. Um, and we start to look at something called in integrated skincare, merging everything together, which is so important. So professional exfoliation, our skin has its own metabolism. It exfoliates itself anyway. But what we are doing with the professional exfoliation is just speeding that bit up. So that stratum cornea and that top layer that you can see, our dead cells um, lift off anyway, they delaminate themselves. But all we're doing when we do a professional exfoliation with a chemical peel or something else is we're speeding that process up. So if you imagine a chemical peel, I'm just going to annotate this because it does help a little bit. So if you imagine if we are using a um, chemical peel, and we're placing this acid on the surface of the skin. This acid, dependent on which it is, is going to start to work its way down in between the skin here and break down the keratin that's holding the skin cells together. 
and dependent on which acid it is is dependent on the depth of that and how far it goes down but the acid is going to break down all these little bonds between the skin ultimately and allow the product to penetrate right down into this live part here so into the dermis so it can do what it does and dependent on the acid again that we use is is dependent on how far down that is going to go but ultimately that is that is the mode of action of a chemical peel and how it works Dermal planing, it's another physical exfoliation. So if we just move back to that slide here, you imagine we are, um, let me annotate again, because this is helpful. With a chemical peel, what we are doing is, is pretty much shaving off, um, oops, sorry guys, technical hitch, happens to the best of us. There we go. We're shaving off these uh, already dead skin cells when we do this treatment. Um, so you do no more than two or three passes. It depends on what they're having alongside it. So yes, we are removing vellus hair, so that soft downy hair. But what we're also doing um, is removing these these dead skin cells already. So then, if you couple dermal planing with a peel, and we've removed some of this, you can imagine the peel is then going to penetrate that a little bit deeper, and we're going to get better results as well. Better still. So it's a physical exfoliation, it's a compliment, it can complement a facial or a peel, and it's a really good starting point for any, any patient into professional skincare regimes as well, um, and also consideration of other higher end treatments, um, like your toxin and your fillers and other things along the way. It's a perfect entry level thing for clients to have. So biostimulation, this is where it really changed for me around about two years ago in aesthetics so um you know i've always had a bit of a fear around filler and i think that's what makes good clinicians in my opinion if you are cocky or too sure of yourself and that's when mistakes can happen so having that kind of fearful edge is 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 just how i roll ultimately but when i found bio simulating products so products and treatments that fix themselves I could sleep again at night now this is not me to put you off other treatments because i am all for you you know training and, and doing what you want to do um, and and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone for sure but there are treatments out there that are so so fantastic and innovative um, and that again was what was the game changer for me and my clinic that you've seen earlier this being one of them so you some of you guys watching this may have trained with me with sunny cost um, i am a trainer for medifex in the uk which is the, the main distributor for sunny cost and we work closely with uh, the the actual product providers and we gained all the the correct protocols and procedures from basically the horse's mouth so as soon as things change we know about it and we know how to implement these changes the way that this product is different, yes, it is injected underneath the skin, but it's a non-cross-linked hyaluronic acid formula. So hyaluronic acid we have in our skin anyway. We put in cross-linked hyaluronic acid in, which is dermal filler, but Sunnycos and bio-stimulating products and skin booster type products basically get the body and the collagen to fix itself. So they're getting the skin to renew itself which is the best way of getting the, the best results as well and if you couple it with other treatments like integrated skincare you're going to get even better results as well this is where collagen therapy comes in so if you imagine you've placed something you've injected something underneath the skin and you've improved the uh, the collagen fibers to be nice long bouncy chains of collagen as opposed to short-lived um, aged haggard old collagen fibers we're then going to therapize this collagen. So we're going to do treatments like microneedling. This is what you can see here. So we're using a pen device. Um, you can get little stampers now, skin tox or um, um, there's another one, I can't remember the name of it. Um, and ultimately you use these to inflict an injury on the skin, much like a chemical peel. We're inflicting an injury to induce collagen production. And if we've got good quality collagen in there in the first place, so we're doing it as prevention or we're doing it and we've, we've with good collagen in there then we're going to get even better results another option you may want to think about is permanent makeup so again it's coming off the whole facial aesthetic side but it's still something that your clients are going to be interested in there is a difference between microblading and permanent makeup tattoo but these are courses that you can definitely consider thinking about bringing up in our aesthetic, aseptic background in our you know in our industry that we're in if we are hygienists and therapists then we are 
all too used to being um you know clinical and clean and aseptic so we you know pretty creative those of you that are um, a therapist those of you that are hygienists manual dexterity is key um, this is what we're all about you know you may put your hand to permanent makeup and really really shine i know there are some hygienists out there that do it and they do a really good job of it already not to name names the next thing you can think about um, and obviously move on to may be laser skin and hair therapy so there's a core of knowledge that anybody needs to do that who wants to have access to a laser um, it's a little bit like radio, radiography, if you remember doing that at university. I did it as a dental nurse, I did it again as a clinician because I'm nuts. Um, and then obviously I had to do it again for the laser side of things. So it's a bit in depth, a bit physics-y, uh, but once you've got it, there's so much that you can do with the laser. You can do facial rejuvenation. You can obviously move on to your laser four, uh, level four laser in practice as well. And hair removal, hair, um, skin and hair therapy with lasers is another aspect that you can maybe brand out into plasma skin tightening is something that my uh, prescriber actually performs and another lady at my clinic too um, and basically again we are inflicting an injury to the skin uh, a controlled injury to the skin and as you can see from the image here the skin is naturally going to tighten itself up because of this what puts me off this as a treatment recommendation is the amount of swelling. So if you have a look at it, it can be quite intense. But if it's managed correctly, um, this treatment is really, really nice and really successful for like really hooded eyes or um, really sagging skin. So it's a nice little niche. You usually use like a pen, a plasma pen, and that's what gives you the really nice results. You may see this as um, fibroblast as well, fibroblast therapy. Something else you can think about, again, it's another investment and things down the line. You have to, you know, you start to buy more and more um, machines and products as you get into this. Um, is your PRP and your PRF treatment. So this is kind of like your vampire facials. But again, we're back to that bio-restimulation. We're getting the body to fix itself. So we're using something out of the body. You would take blood, so you'd need a phlebotomy uh, qualification, which you know you, you can move on to do, um, and then you kind of process this blood and utilize it within uh, treatments as well to get fantastic results. Something else you can think about is supplementary shots. Now, I know there's mixed opinions on this um, B12, vitamin C, amongst other things. I know there's IV drip stations that go on in London and, and other places as well. Um, but some of these, it, well, the majority of these you will find are prescription items. There are some out there that aren't. Um, all I would say is err on the side of caution and make sure, like in dentistry, you go for evidence de evidence based products. I, um, I do have these on offer at my clinic. Um, they're not for everybody. Um, and again, I work alongside prescribers to offer these sort of treatments as well um, and work closely with the GP surgery to make sure that I'm keeping everybody happy. But ultimately, the way that you can approach it is to get the patient to think about skin and nutrition. So what I talked about initially, that analysis, medical history, compliance, all of the above, um, then we are well trained and ready to be doing that with our clients already. And there's no reason why we can't be discussing skin and nutrition and the importance of antioxidants amongst other things that they should be putting on their skin as well. Some of us may already have had this in clinic as well, where clients have come in, um, whether it's for aesthetic purposes or even dentistry, and we come across psychological um, and mental health disorders such as, um, you know, body dysmorphic disorder. This is these are all things that we need to think outside the box with. If we're getting into this industry, we're going to see it more. Um, you know, I turn an awful lot of people down for treatment. People that are addicted to filler, people that lie to me about the treatment that they've had, and when you're first starting out it's easier uh, to miss these things because we're only human and it's about building up your experience in these things uh, but again this is definitely something that you want to move on um, and look at probably before you've done anything else because you'll get people that will just keep coming in um, and there comes that point of where you're being ethical and taking the money off them and that's hopefully grained in you from your GDC standards and, and you know that that aspect of things as well or at least it should be safety in practice so a to z please don't go you know flying a to z think about this methodically do your SWOT analysis do your personal development plan for aesthetics or skincare or this industry that you're really interested in and where you want to go 
um, look into the cost of things so look into um, hopefully you're going to choose some courses with myself and we're going to have a great journey together but then we need to think about insurance are you going to get covered uh, the BSDHT now have a bolt on for aesthetics. I helped design it, so it's pretty savvy and pretty good. Uh, but there are all the providers out there. So I'm also an accredited provider of insurance from Enhance, and they go out as a broker and they look for lots and lots of options for insurance cover as well. You need to make sure insurance cover is right for you. And if you've got an accredited certification and you've gone through the correct process and you're doing things safely, your insurance is just a basic backup, but you definitely need to have it there and it needs to be robust to protect you to protect your professional registration and to protect your client first and foremost when you need a prescriber hopefully I've helped a little bit with that so if you're wanting to dip your toe into any sort of filler or toxin you must have a supportive prescriber on hand um, somebody who you can rely on if you need them because think you know um, complications do occur they do happen and we try our best to prevent them but ultimately it's it's probably the best way that you learn when something like that happens but you need to have somebody on hand um, that you can obviously talk to and or refer to and any good training provider should be able to put you in uh, connection with a, a prescriber as well in my opinion and where to next so hopefully you can decipher that from your SWOT analysis uh, that you've hopefully going to either done or you're going to move on to doing after this course and you think about where you want to go with it what sort of treatments you want to offer the avatar, the patient, the client that you're going to have in the chair um, and who, who and how you want to develop uh, your treatment offerings with that person and that individual as well. Your business plan, your business mindset and where you want to go. And be a fish out of water for a little while. It's scary. Trust me. You know, I push myself out of my comfort zone on a daily basis. Highly recommend it. It's exhilarating. Um, so please do. Uh, if you have any questions, then do get in touch. As you can see, there is a full array of courses available to you guys online at this time. Um, but I also appreciate that that costing is an implication too. So that is why it's so important to get your SWOT analysis in there and think about where you really want to go and what treatments you want to offer uh, first and foremost in terms of treatment revenue and, and, and money kickbacks and what you get off e each treatment then we will cover that on each individual course um, but you know ultimately it's it's down to doing a, and having a career and and choosing things that you want to do that you will enjoy doing as well um, here's the online training options so it's, you can choose things in your way uh, you pick up facial aesthetics, skincare, business training, all integrated your way but via your personal development plan, but via the way that you want to do things, but guided by someone who's already made the mistakes and made, um, you know, the, the expensive purchases of silly courses and things that you don't actually need and all minimal support from them um, if you have any questions then i'm here anytime i hope you've enjoyed this training today the weird voiceover that I've done has been a bit strange uh, from home again. I'm working from home while I put this all together for you guys. First thing you need to do if you've not done it already, swap plan and go. OK, so it's a free e-course available to you to plan your learning journey into skincare and facial aesthetics. What's stopping you? What strengths do you have right now? What's stopping you? What are your weaknesses? What opportunities do you have in front of you? Like what, you know, have you got a room? Have you got a spare room? Have you got a clinic? Uh, but what threats are stopping you from doing that? Once you've got that, you submit a bit of an assignment to me. I help you out with that. So it's not just like X, Y, and Z, and I want to go. You know, you're not on your own. And then we can go from there. So we get the right training program and plan for you. That's so important. Anybody that books any training with me throughout May and June, and I may extend this, it just depends on the current situation, but they are going to get a free MaskEd accreditation. If you don't know what this is, where have you been? Uh, MaskEd, I work as an ambassador for Skin, which is a charity um, very close to my heart. They have an online accreditation which gives you an insight into the early detection of skin cancer and melanoma. 
if we are going to start working with skin in aesthetics in anything or even if you just stick it in your dentistry bubble whatever it is that you're doing you need to know more about skin cancer and the early detection of it's so so important um, and obviously if you're booking a course with me you'll get a little code that you can use and you can go on and do that accreditation so i will keep you busy uh, during this downtime um, of, of covid19 if that's what you want uh, you may regret regret it but now ultimately we're in this together and i want you to to move forward and have confidence when you're with your clients and you can be back face to face with them as well but please note obviously some of the courses will require these prerequisites and making sure that you've got the anatomy and the knowledge to move on to the next point so you don't feel like it'd be depth and lost so it you know do chat to me about which ones it is that you want to go on to first there will be a physical assessment required for all the practical elements as well um, it's not a case that you can't learn how to do some of these treatments online it's just not possible i know there are some out there but you will really struggle to get insurance on them afterwards so um, you know once these social distancing um, measures are relaxed then we can book in a one-to-one -one assessment refresh on the theory a little bit um, and then do your assessment of the actual practical side of things um, once things are back to normal as well so i hope that helps um, if you have any questions, you know where I am. I really, really hope you've enjoyed the, um, the course today and I look forward to hearing from you um, about where you want to go next and seeing all of your SWOT analysis, um, that's a big word, analysis, um, and look forward to seeing all the different variant uh, SWOT analysis out there from all of you guys with lots of different goals. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. What do you want to achieve? Because you know what, this is going to sound really corny, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. I sit and look at my clinic here on a daily basis when I can't go there. Um, and again, you know, I absolutely love um, insight, exciting and engaging with you guys to, to encourage you to do more because it is possible. Trust me, if I can do it, anybody can. Um, I hope you have a lovely afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time it is while you're listening to this. And thank you very much for enrolling. And there's just a few questions to move on to uh, to get a bit of a 